The conversations of yesterday are not selling and, and moving the properties of today. We're not talking about winning against multiple offers. We're mm -hmm. talking about helping someone decide whether or not they should even buy or sell. That's We're right. talking about return on investment and rate of return. We're talking about tax savings and tax deductions. We're not talking about, do I like that one or can my family fit in that house anymore? Welcome to the Referrals Podcast. The show designed to help everyone from the solopreneur to the Fortune 500 company win the referral game. And now, here is your host, Michael J. Mayer. What's up? Welcome to another amazing referrals podcast. Yes, I do know it's amazing. Every single one of them is amazing. You know it's amazing. I know it's amazing. Everyone knows it's amazing. It's going to be amazing. And I will tell you that this is one of those episodes where... I want you to know that you can go from zero, which means stranger, to a 10, which is referable in 30 minutes or less. I just I just want everybody to know that that can take place in this world. People always stand on stage, which we're going to talk about me on stage here in a little bit. And it's like people stand on stage or sit on stage and they go, it's all about relationships. And everybody, you know, the, the the people on the panel all look at that person and go, hmm, so wise. And the moderator nods and goes, hmm, so wise. And everybody in the audience goes, hmm, so wise. Like, it's all about relationships. Yeah. Like, okay, so what do we do now? You know, but here's the thing, right, is then they say, well, it takes time, right? You know, the best time to build a relationship is today the second best time was 10 years ago right and and it it takes time it takes no i'm telling you right now in 30 minutes you can go from zero to referable and that's the truth how do i know this guy did it this guy literally did it and he he's on referrals podcast today because he was so referable i literally could refer him with 100% confidence in, after a 30 minute zoom and you're going to find out why today and it's like, you got to really pinpoint that. You got to be looking at what he says, how he says it, and and like that thing. And just like today, you're going to learn how to not be weird. You're going to learn how to not be unlikable. Like you're going to, you're going to learn how to be likable. You're going to learn today, like, like how to put together your sentences and your questions and, and your thoughts in a way that makes you referable. I, I'm excited about, I mean, in 30, 45 minutes, you're going to discover some simple secrets about referability. And that, that's what I love. I mean, is there any better way to learn than, and, and by the way, you don't have to, I'm not, you don't have to go to three months of classes to learn this. 30 minutes, you're going to learn this. And is there any better than just learning by example, watching a master do it? I don't know. I think I think that's the the case here, right? So, all right. Before I get to our esteemed guest, if you're not loaded up and ready to go right now, then I'm sorry for you. You need to check your heartbeat. But here's the thing. I need to give a quick shout out to FJF Realtor. I'm just saying right now. We have a 5-star, thank you for that though, iTunes review and beautiful review. And then the screen name is FJF Realtor. And I, and I, I want you to know it's, it's impossible to refer you by that screen name. So I, I want everybody to know, when you do a review, I don't care if it's Amazon and it's for a product, put your, put your name in there and your, at least your website for how to get in touch with you, like mainrealtor.com or mainrealestate.com. Dot com or or whatever it may be, whatever yours is, right? Kansas City Home Team dot com, right? That was mine. So I'm just saying, from FJF Realtor, it says always hopeful, always helpful. I see what you did there. Michael and his guest always have a positive can do attitude. This is a great place to come get tips and be aspired, especially when so many in the market are talking gloom and doom. Are they? Are they? Real tips that are applicable and really work, which that's it, right? It's real people, real stories, real referrals. So thank you, FJF Realtor. I'm guessing your your name, then your initials are FJF, but I don't know that. I would love to thank you personally, but I can't do it. I, can, I couldn't even write you a handwritten note. I couldn't even text you. 
or find you. And I will tell you, I'm really good at finding people. But in this case, I couldn't find you. So I don't know your name. I'm sorry, Fred or Frederica. I love you. Thank you for the iTunes review. But that's also a good lesson. All right. Call to action. Join me at EXPCon in Las Vegas. I'm keynoting October 2nd. Actually, October 3rd. The event is October 2nd through the 5th. I'll be speaking in the VIP track. So make sure to buy that ticket. You can get the ticket at expcon.exprealty.com. And by the way, it's also for those of you viewing on YouTube, it's in my name. If you're not sure exactly what that URL was and you want to get the premier pass, you will get the VIP strand and the VIP experience. Part of that experience is having to slog through my 30 minute session um, from four to four thirty on the third. So you, I'm I'm just kidding. I will tell you, I am going to give you massive value in thirty minutes. That's that's what I will promise you. If you play along with me, I'm, I'm going to do something a little different, a little weird. It I I will be fully clothed this time, but I want you to know we're going to have. It is Vegas, right? In this case, we we've, we've got to be careful with what we say. But I will see you at the VIP experience, the VIP strand at EXPCon. Please go. And by the way, you don't have to be with the EXP to go. Anybody can go. We have people that are not with the EXP that are going as my guests. There we go. So you could go. I just want you to know. Make it happen. So we've got to get to our guest today. Our guest today is the Senior Vice President of Agent Development with EXP Realty. He has 20 years of experience as a trained problem solver and business builder with a passion for real estate education and business operations, as well as a unique background as a technology entrepreneur, educational content creator, sales executive, and an engineer. He is a visionary leader and proven integrator. He has become adept at the science of problem solving, solution development, implementation, and execution. His current personal passions are traveling with his family, coaching basketball, trying to live a predominantly plant-based lifestyle, and learning new technologies. Without further ado, let's welcome to Referrals Podcast, Mr. Curtis Dixon. Welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, Referrals Podcast family. So honored to be with you, Michael. Thanks for having me, man. So good to be here. You know, piece number one, if I'm talking, I'm teaching. If you want a tip for making quick connection, meet people where they are. I listen to podcasts in the morning, but I might be getting it in on my walk at night. So whenever you're listening to this, thanks for choosing to listen in. And uh, we're going to give you as much value as we can in a short amount of time today. Michael, let's do it. I love it. Here, here's what's interesting about this. So we got curious about what do people do? What are they doing when they listen to the podcast? So we asked, right? So we went and we polled the audience. We have a who wants to be a millionaire strategy. It works very effectively. And one of those, is, right, you pull the audience, phone a friend, narrow down the options, right? Which is, you know, half and half, 50-50. So when we pulled the audience, what we discovered is people were listening to us while they were on a treadmill, while they were on a walk, or while they were on a stationary bike. And that they never worked out for more than an hour. They were never on the, the, so guess what? We had sessions early that were hour and 20 minutes, hour and 15 minutes, hour and five minutes, hour and two minutes. From then on, we've never had anything over an hour. So it, it's one of those where it's like, it's perfect for getting on the bike or perfect for the walk. So you nailed it with, with our audience. We, and we have a very healthy audience, which, which I love. And so Nailed it there. Meet people where they are. And you nailed it. So here's the other thing. So you are the senior VP of, of agent development with the XP. First of all, what's your favorite part of that job? What's your favorite part of it? Favorite part? Um, I've got to say probably my favorite part today as it has changed, you know, since I started this. But probably my favorite part today is the opportunity to create. Um, creation and creativity and making something for someone that I found joy in making is probably my, my favorite thing to do, favorite way to spend my time. You know, I'm, um, I'm, I'm focused on progress. I love seeing people. I love myself being somewhere different tomorrow than where I was today, Michael. And so I think creation creates the opportunity for another to take something and make it their own, right? So if we can if we can create a new class today that's relevant for a real estate professional, if we can get a new message out, a new piece of information, or maybe if we could make a connection at an event or seminar that kind of changes their life, 
trajectory then all of that time, energy, and effort spent for the 20 years prior to that moment was worth it and realized. So I'd say my favorite thing to do these days is create. And I think it honors and gives people the opportunity to take what you've created and, and help it impact wherever they need to make an impact. Make a difference, right? And, and through your creations, you're, you're making a difference every day and, and love that. All right. So what's your least favorite part of your, your job? The least favorite part of the job. Oh man, I think uh, probably the least favorite part of the job is. This is what positive people do. I'm just telling you is, is when you have a great job and you're super positive, you tend to think about the really great parts of your job a lot more than you do the least favorite parts, right? You don't spend a lot of time thinking about the negative. You know, typically what you're doing is you're, you're moving around or through the problem areas, right? So I'd Mm -hmm. say probably the least favorite part of the job is that the problem areas that I get to face very different from where I started earlier, early in my career, we now face a challenge, Michael, of not being able to save them all. Right. My mm-hmm. least favorite yeah. part of the job is that imagine you're an entrepreneur out there, you're a salesperson out there, wherever it is. And you are like that reviewer said, Michael, like feeling the doom and gloom vibe from people around you. What that does sometimes, imagine you were in the ocean and there's a big boat. If you stop swimming for just a moment, we probably can't get to you to save you. Right. But if you'll keep swimming, the life preserver is going to get to you. We're going to save the ones that are swimming towards us. So, probably my least favorite part of the job, Michael, is I wish we had the ability to go grab every single person in this industry, in this business, and say, Look, if you'll put two years of energy and effort towards building yourself up and your skill set, building your relationships and your database, making connections, you'll never look back and you won't drown. But it's those people in those first couple of years that are struggling with making that investment. Um, that's my least favorite part is we can't go grab them all. They've got to they've got to come to the lighthouse a little bit. Right. There the you tugboat's go. only so big, <laughs> but people swimming towards this man um, will create something that helps them. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And and. Man, what a what a walk we could walk down the whys, right? Why why yeah. why does that happen? Why do they quit swimming? Why do they you know why do yeah. they go into tread and water mode and and that kind of thing? And yeah. and that that probably a story for another day. And it and, and it's I I think I think let's just keep getting the message out that there is a lighthouse, you know, 100%. that there is a boat, there is someone there that that cares enough to to save them, right? And that that's where my whole my whole lighthouse analogy came is is listen, I am going to stand, you know, strong and tall. I'm going to shine my light. I am not going to run up and down the beach yelling, use me, use me. Right. Uh, and, and guess what? The people that need help, they need guidance. Then they will use me. They will find me and the, and they will, that kind of thing. And, and I think that's all we can do is, is just shine our light as bright as possible and, and as far as possible and, and help those that want to be helped. Some of them don't, you know, submarines okay. don't need lighthouses. They don't. So guess what? I'm not going to work with the submarines. Well, they're they're the lowest of the low anyway. Why would I want to work with them? I'm just kidding. Thank you for your service if you're in a submarine. But all right. So how did you get that position? I, I you know, yeah. by the way, I have a list. We have a list of questions that we had for Curtis. We we sent them to him ahead of time. We've we've got all this rehearsed stuff, and and right now we're totally off of it. So just so everybody knows how much effort we put into these podcasts. So, but that's what happens when you get together. First off, yeah. I just want to say that's the power of being together, right? When we're not yet together in the room, the best we can do is share some information back and forth. Hey, Curtis, we're going to talk about this when we get together. That's great because what that does is put me at ease, gives me some excitement and gives me a little bit of structure so I can show up prepared. But then when we get together, we need to really invest in the fact that, hey, now we can go wherever we need to go. We can be dynamic. We can make a change. And it, it goes back to kind of how I started, Michael, was like meeting people where they are. We're excited today to talk about all the things we thought we were going to talk about. Then you get here and you realize, is there a different way we can make a bigger impact right now in this moment? So I'm gonna, I'll do two things. You know, I'll share the story of how I got into my role on three things. I'm going to share the story how I got into my role. I'm going to share how and when I was referred to you, Michael, not once, but twice. Okay. And then I'm going to touch on briefly what I think is going on with people who are struggling, they're stopping swimming. You know, if you're out there drowning right now, if you're feeling alone, if you're feeling unstuck, stuck, if you're feeling unsure, scared, uncertain, um, you're feeling any of those feelings, number one, you're not alone. Number two, there are lighthouses like Michael, um, like what we try to do at eXp Realty with our eXp University, Michael. There's so many people out there that are beacons 
and they're winning and they're surrounded by winners and they have the recipe, the formula, the mechanism, the tools, the strategies, you just got to get to them. So don't stop going. But for those people that are kind of paused, Michael, normally they're paused because one of three things, they're not sure how, Mm -hmm. they're not sure why, or they're not sure if, if they can. Mm-hmm. Right. And so a lot of times those are the, 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 the things that hold us back. And so you talked recently in your podcast about the three C's, right. And character, competency, and communication. A lot of times what happens in any difficult moment situation, or when something's new, cause that can feel difficult and uncertain, right. When you're doing something new, what can happen is your character is tested first. Right. Mm-hmm. So when I got into real estate in really 2014, Um, I entered kind of through the investing and I had a business at the time, an entrepreneur, and I wanted to put some money somewhere. So I thought I was going to buy a house or buy a property. Right. And you fast forward a little ways and you meet a person and you, you, you get connected to an idea. And all of a sudden I find myself at a residential real estate brokerage, a small one in San Antonio, Texas. And I'm not knowing what is up, down, left or right. But I know from my character, who I am, and I'm a business builder, I'm a problem solver, I'm an entrepreneur. So I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to figure out how to sell some real estate and make some money. And what I did was get referred by another real estate entrepreneur to read the seven levels of communication. Oh, wow. And he said, you need to read this book. I read this book cover to cover. Now, when was this? When was this? We're talking 2015. Yeah. Probably mid to late 2015, maybe Q4 2015. First time. San Antonio. Do you remember who it was? Oh, I know. know. Uh, Yeah. So it, it had to have been, you know, really only one or two people come to mind, but I'll give the shout out to the person I'm certain it had to have been, had to be my guy, Kyle Handy. So Kyle Handy ran a small real estate brokerage here in San Antonio named Handy Mm -hmm. Realty. And uh, Kyle was the first guy that I had the chance to learn real estate from. And what we did was make a value exchange. Michael, I had been an entrepreneur for a decade and he had been in real estate for a decade. I said, we'll build this business together if you'll teach me real estate and and we'll do some stuff. And he handed me the book. And that was the first time I was referred to, you know, almost eight years ago. And So fast forward, going on this journey, a few years go by, a a really great real estate ride. I absolutely focused on that time. I mean, I was big on the influential zone of the seven levels pyramid, right? I was face-to-face every weekend, multiple times a weekend, multiple times a day. I was hosting events, right? I was really, really pushing. I was writing handwritten notes. I was very fortunate to adopt the system and have people around me who ran the system, right? So that's some pause tips for you all. Not only should you be adopting the system, right? You can go read Michael's book and you can build a seven-figure business. You can do that. But if you surround yourself with other people who are doing that too, if you plug into the community, get the value, that's how when your arms and legs get tired, Michael, and you can't swim for a moment, you got to catch your breath, someone holds you up. That's right. And, And you go together, right? So I did that for a few years and then along came this ridiculously huge tugboat and it was called exp realty there we go and uh exp realty was at the time a a small but fast growing real estate brokerage opportunity and i was running a real estate independent brokerage with my friend kyle and um i saw an opportunity for impact right i saw the chance to help people i saw the chance to create a little something more and so the way that i got referred into my job the job i have now senior vice president that wasn't my first job at the company my first job was exp university content writer the way i got referred was someone got hired at exp and it made the news so i reached out cold cold called her right cold messaged her and we started a friendship and that friendship took probably no more than 30 minutes. Uh, a mm-hmm. message on social media, uh, a quick video message back and forth led to a phone call. At that time, we weren't Zooming yet, right? Led to a phone call. And that's it. We were friends. We had a connection. And then every time I saw a chance, I added value to her life and her business. I gave her feedback. I talked about education. While I was teaching and training and learning, I was sharing what I learned regularly. And now we were more than friends. We were peers. Mm-hmm. And so one day she called me and she said, I'd like to refer you for a job opportunity at EXP. Would you be open to taking it? And that was the beginning of how I got my job off a referral. Boom. I knew it was referral. I, did, I mean, we haven't covered that before. We, nope. we didn't even talk about it. Wasn't even on the script. But I knew that it was going to be relationship or referral. I mean, and, and what is it? Like 75% of all jobs are actually gotten through people you know versus ads. I mean, and and that has to be going down some with all the Indeeds and LinkedIn's and yeah. all the ways that you can, you know, apply for jobs. But it's just amazing. I knew it was going to be a referral. Let me ask you a quick question on your relationship with her, yeah. right? Reached out, started the connection, did a phone call, talked about like, hey, let's just 
share uh, experiences over the, you know, whatever. I mean, honestly, she probably didn't know, even know that you were going to do that. It was more just, Hey, let's talk. You talked and then you put it on you to create the relationship and keep the relationship going. Okay. So how did you share? How did you, add, and, and was it email? Was it phone call? Yeah. Was it, was it um, text message? However you did it. How yeah. did you share when you learned something? Hey, I learned this and I just thought it might be useful to you. So the way we did it was I would call us, we were video pen pals. Do you ever okay. remember being a kid? You know, I don't know if they still do this in schools, but back when I was younger, we got in the habit of writing letters back and forth to like kids in other states or or whatever, right? And that was called being a pen pal. So if you've never heard of that word, go Google it, pen pals. <laughs> and so what Kimberly and I did was the way we communicated was back and forth on video. And so I had a message for her. Hey, I just noticed this happened and I had some feedback and experience on that. I wanted to share that with you. I'd record a three minute video message on my phone. We created a folder on our iPhones and we would drop it back and forth. What that did, Michael, and this is a great tip for anybody who wants to build a relationship, yet you don't have the ease of being one-to-one -one, face to face all the time. It let us have a continuous conversation that was maybe like a 20, 30 minute conversation, Michael, but it lasted a span of like three months because right. I'd record a video one day driving home after work or sitting on the treadmill. She'd think of something, she'd record a video and we'd go back and forth. And it was like, we were in the same room. And again, in probably 30 minutes to an hour over a few months, we built a really good relationship. And, and it's interesting that just, I mean, it was 10, three minute videos, 30 minutes. And uh, it was all in the, I mean, it's like, I can count on you. I, I keep going back to, like, I mean, honestly, a little part of me during this conversation, and, and maybe I shouldn't say it, maybe I should say it at the end, say but it. honest to goodness truth, this is just how, is I'm like, how the heck is Curtis so referable? Like there's that part, of, and, and I think that's what made me referable over the years is mm -hmm. I investigated super successful people and looked at the, the kind of like the, you know, behind the lyrics. Yeah. What was the music behind the lyrics? Like, what what's the music behind the words? Like, what is it really? And first of all, there's nothing more attractive than growth, right? You're in growth mode all the time. And I will tell you, everybody listening to this, you want to get more referrals, put yourself in growth mode. Like, maybe your growth mode is like a two or three right now. Go to a five. Go learn. Go meditate. Go journal. Go read, read, read something, read 7L again, read Miracle Morning for Real Estate Agents again. I don't care what you read, read how to win friends and, and, you know, influence people, but read something and share it, share with people that you're reading it and what you learn from it. And if you didn't learn anything from it, you could share that too. I doubt you can read any book and not learn something from it if you really want to. That's the first thing. The, the second thing is that I can count on you. Like I, you have followed up so diligently that I know that I could refer you and the other person is going to be followed. I know you'd follow up on the referral. I know that you would talk to him like this. You carried on a video pen pal relationship for three months. And, you know, what are the, what are the percent? I mean, how many people have ever done that? I would say that half of a half of a half of a percent. Yeah. And and to me and you, it's like, no, that that's that's how we do it. That's what we do. But that's that's what people need to learn from us is that we people can count on us because you know what? We follow up. We and, and people are like, well, I forget. And it's like, I forget too. Sure. But technology tells me not to forget. I have reminders. God bless technology for reminding me to sing happy birthday to somebody the day before their birthday. Did I remember their birthday was September 13th? The answer is no. no. But technology Calendar gave me a reminder a day you, right? before, right? Yeah. So I just, uh, like I said, I, I, unfortunately, I'm trying to psychoanalyze you while we're having this <laughs> conversation. So I do apologize for that a little bit. But I do really appreciate the video pen pal idea and how you shared, you know, how you, you, you know, kind of yeah. delivered on that experience. So, Thank all right. You. All right. So what, you know, you have such a great helicopter, you know, 10,000, not 30,000, but more like 10,000 because you're closer to the agents than maybe the, the CC level, right? Sure. So 10,000 foot, you're in the helicopter overseeing, like, especially the real estate agent of today. So what are the top three things 
that you're hearing that agents need or want right now? And and I really want this answer. Like, I why? I really want to help. I, I, you know, I'm standing taller than ever and shining my light brighter than ever. Like I want to help more than ever. So, you know, what are you seeing out there? All right. Well, I've got to put a little frame around this. And so I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm just, this is a theme. Didn't pick it, didn't practice it. It's just really, really coming up as we're talking. You know, the theme is that it depends exactly where you are when you're asking that question. And by where you are, I mean, you have to, you have to take a moment and like reflect on where you're at, you know, Michael said, are you at growth mode two or are you at growth mode eight? Because mm-hmm. if you're at growth mode eight, the answer is a little different than if you're at growth mode two. Mm-hmm. And it's the same thing sort of with your your consistency or your approach. You know, those are two really common words. Like you said, everybody preaches from the stage and relationships. I think consistency is the same kind of thing. Everybody's saying be consistent. What the heck does that mean? Right. Like to everybody for real, it means do all the things you say you're going to do all the time. No one's a robot. No one's perfect. You can't do that. So again, I'm going to introduce a a different concept. It depends on how you get energy and where you give energy. So those are the two frames around my answers. So I'm going to assume that if you're listening to this podcast, you're part of the referrals podcast family, you're in growth mode five and above. So I'm going to talk to you. And if you're below five, I'm not excluding you. I'm challenging you to get get to five and then take these answers. So for example, Michael, the number one problem that everybody's going to type in a chat box when I do a class every week and ask, what's your number one challenge? Because I literally do a class every Wednesday with about 100 plus realtors in it live on Zoom. And I ask them every Wednesday, same question. What's your number one challenge? It doesn't matter who comes, same question. And most people, the growth mode twos, they all type leads, 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 right? That's just what they're going to say. That's their, one of their number one challenges. But yesterday, I sat in a mastermind with about 15 top producers, growth mode eights, right? And they didn't say leads. Mm -hmm. They chunked down and were way more specific. I need to find buyers and sellers who need to buy or sell now. That's way different than leads because right now in your business, in your real estate business, if you're out there struggling, Michael, you need to make more money and spend less money right Mm -hmm. now, right? Because it is challenging right now. It is a unique cocktail that probably none of us have really ever tasted before, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't just need leads. You need the right leads in with the right motivations. And Mm -hmm. so what does that take to find out? You know, number one, Michael, it takes the right brainstorm. You got to be in the right room. So just yesterday, I'll give a couple of the goods away here. Someone was talking about their new referral partners being assisted living centers, Because when you're elderly, 65 and up or 55 and up, and you go to one of these communities, the first question on the questionnaire is, do you currently own a home that you have to sell? And before you can move into an assisted living facility, you must have sold your home to live there. So for all you out there looking for a referral partner right now, pick up the phone, go knock on the door, go sit down with these assisted living centers, and you're going to get now leads because they have to sell tomorrow. And there was, there's a list that goes on and on. So when you're, when you're in these rooms, you need to ask better questions if you want the solution to the problem. So number one, they need buyers and sellers that need to buy and sell now. Number two, this is where it's going to be a little bit, I don't want to say counterintuitive. It's not, but I don't think we've stopped and reflect this way. More than ever right now, agents need a community. They need connection to a community. Now that's the growth mode two version. What they really need is connection to the community that's going to drive accountability that's going to give them transformational experiences, that's gonna give them the coaching and mentoring that's really moving the needle. So you can't take two agents that haven't sold any houses this year, put them in a mastermind and expect them to go somewhere houses. But if you will jump on a plane, spend $700 and fly out to Las Vegas and EXPCon where there's going to be a mastermind exclusively with the top 50, where they're gonna get your learning from stage, right? Your knowledge drop, they may not be in your in your groups or any of your coaching programs or anything, but they're going to invest in themselves. They're going to get into the right community. So right now, community is the number two thing people need because again, when you're navigating something unknown, you want to go fast, go alone. You want to go far to go, go together. Right now is not a time where anybody's able to go very, very fast. Mm-hmm. You need to be pushing to go very, very far. And you need to be together with others to do that. So that's number two, they need community. The first one was, of course, they need to get the specific leads that are going to drive their business. And then I think the third one is right now, they need to skill up. Mm. The conversations of today, Michael, uh, the conversations of yesterday are not selling and and moving the properties of today. 
right? We're not talking about in real estate getting uh, winning against multiple offers. We're mm. talking about helping someone decide whether or not they should even buy or sell. That's We're right. talking about return on investment and rate of return. We're talking about um, tax savings and tax deductions. We're not talking about, do I like that one or can my family fit in that house anymore, mm. right? So it's totally different conversation. So people need to skill up. Specifically, you touched on it last week, you know, in the area of communication. Um, and before you even earn the right to make a recommendation, you have to have increased your skill set, knowledge, and tool set to a point where you have the the right to to recommend what they should do. Yeah, I love that. Skill up, act up, get going, right? Yep. And I, I I I mean, what I, I mean, you're so articulate, right? I mean, here's what smart people do that I see average people not do. One of the things is when somebody asks them a question, they think for a second and then they typically say, I've got a couple of answers to that, or I have three answers to that, or you know what? There's five things that come to mind and five things is very rare. It's usually one, you know, one big one or two or three. And like you said, I've got three things that I really uh, would point out, right? One is, is, is it leads? It's always leads, right? Uh, By the way, Every business needs leads. If Walmart, people quit going to Walmart, then guess what? If if they they don't have business, they're going to go out of business. It's just like anything. Everybody needs leads. But I think that's where the difference is, is, is if I could wish one wish on all of the listeners of, of Referrals po- Podcast, it would be the gift of specificity. Like be specific with what you want. The more specific you are with what you want, the more likely you are to find it right? I want to buy a car. Okay. Well, good luck with that. Right. But it's like, I want to buy a Mercedes low miles, three to five years old, and it's going to have this package, right? You're going to find that car very, very quickly. Yep. Guess what? If you know exactly what lead you want, you're going to find it a far more quickly by being specific about it. Here's the other thing that helps in the referability game is if you're specific about it, other people can help you. Go post on Facebook right now. I want to buy a car. Are they going to help you buy that? People are going to go, okay. They're not even going to start to help you, right? But if you said, I'm looking for a Mercedes, three years old, low mileage, you know, this package, this, you know, the SUV, whatever it is, you you would have all these people who are giving you sites, giving you Google searches, giving you, yeah. they could help you more. And guess what? The more specific you are with what you need, the more likely people can help you, right? I mean, I've lost my dog. Okay, right? I can't really, I mean, okay. And and what's the first question? Well, what kind of dog is it? What's what it color like? is it? So specificity is your friend. And unfortunately, we live in a world that, that kind of is okay with vague and specificity will help you be more referable. That is a great thing is if you have buyers who are looking for properties and can't find them, post something on Facebook or Twitter or wherever social media use that you have a buyer need. Don't be, you know, you're you're a fiduciary. So you want to keep the confidential thing confidential. But hey, we're looking for a house that's four bedroom, three bath, three car garage in Overland Park you're going to be surprised at what people will do to help you. They're like, oh my gosh, I just drove by for sale by owner the other day. Or, oh my gosh, you know what? We were kind of thinking about moving, you know, could they wait till March to to buy? And it's like, maybe, right? So specificity is your friend. I love that. And then, you know, community, There, there's, you know, I, I think community since since like 2020 has been, the thing that has helped more people survive and thrive in, in this business than anything. I, that's what I love about generosity generation. What we do is all we do trainings. We don't do what we do coaching, but like it's all starts with training and everybody goes through a 30 day challenge together, right? Live interactive. And, and they, you know, we built this really strong, big community of small communities and, and, and there's been times like Jesse, I, these people tell stories just like, I wouldn't be in this business right now if it, if it wasn't for this group. And, and I, you know, I love that aspect of it. You hit it on the head, by the way, that's, that's not, I think that's an underrated one. I think there's a lot of people out there right now, Curtis, that feel alone, even though maybe they don't have to, if they just raise their hand, 
they they'd probably be welcomed into the exp community right welcomed 100%. into the generosity generation community 100 percent. no you're, you're totally right I, I can i can respond to almost everything you said but i want to allow us to keep going wherever you want to go today but i want just, that i want your working ideas so okay so one of my favorite podcasts that i listen to besides the referrals podcast of course is i listen to jay shetty's on purpose yeah and if you've never checked out Jay Shetty and you're feeling any sort of that, I'm alone, I need some high energy, some high vibe stuff, take you out of your, your sales you know, conversation or your referrals conversation, your business conversation, it'll let you put on a little different set of lenses. Jay was interviewing Michael, the CEO of Airbnb, right? Fortune 500 company, unbelievable growth story, right? And the CEO of Airbnb, while he was talking about uh, as much of business as he could handle, he talked about feeling lonely right now. He mm -hmm. is connected to literally hundreds, if not thousands of employees, billions of people across the globe, hosts and renters. He's, you know, multi-billionaire probably financially. He's in this place. And yet what you said is true. He was looking for a tribe. He wants to connect the world, right? And so if you're sitting out there feeling lonely, if you're sitting out there feeling uncertain, the call to you is to go get connected. Go help another person who feels that way. Go sit with someone face to face. Go to a group. Go to an event. That's that's the calling right now if that resonated with you at all. And, you know, it's absolutely real. And I think that's why we see, like you said, Michael, the sort of resurgence in finding and getting connected to a group of people, um, you know, in your city, in your market. And think about this. So now we're going to flip it because, like I said, you always want to examine things through the lens of the other person. You know, that's where we all so often go wrong. Back to creation. I don't create for myself. I create for others. Right. I have to like it. I have to enjoy it. I've got to be proud. and It's got to be authentic, but I'm doing it for other people. So imagine you were out there organizing a little breakfast get together in your community. How many referrals or how referable are you going to be building yourself up to be because you're helping those other nine people that feel lonely, right? People taking advantage of creating communities that are connected. Um, that's real stuff you can be doing right now and people are craving it. So when you're the one that delivers it, not only are you the solution provider, the expert, but you actually have some control over it. You can make it fit your schedule. You can keep it within your budget. You don't have to just plug into what other people are doing. You can get out and do a mini version of what Michael's doing right now. You don't have to write a book. You don't have to wait. You just got to call five people and get together. And that's the beginning. Yeah, uh, like literally, you should drop your mic if 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 it wouldn't break when you do it. I mean, I have broken a mic dropping the mic and <laughs> nearly broke my my uh, cup dropping it earlier. But I, I, I so take care of yourself, take care of your sphere. That that's what I think of. And and number one is take care of yourself. Is is you know conferences are like this, and I think a lot of people might feel this way. Conferences are like, man, I'm not sure if I want to go. I mean, it, 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 it's, it's a hassle. It's got travel. It's got plane, you know, really? airports. It's got, it's got, you know, difference. It's got change. It's not in my normal. And, and so we're like, you know, I, I'm not sure if I want to go, but every time we go to a conference, it's always, we're happy we went, right? I'm always glad we went. I'm not always happy to go, but I'm always glad I went. And that's what I think is, I think a lot of people might not know they're lonely, right? They may not even recognize that in themselves until they go to a conference and they get charged up and they start to, to connect with others who feel like they do, like-minded people. They get that juice of going from growth mode two to five or five to eight, which always happens at a conference. Yep. So that's the first thing is take care of yourself. The other thing is, you know, when you signed up to be a professional realtor or a professional lender or a professional entrepreneur. You signed up to be a leader in your community. And the first thing that you need to realize with everyone since 2020, right? In 2020, we started a two to three year trend of becoming caged and enraged. We 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 were caged. We literally could not go out. We had to wear a mask. We had, we had to, we had to. And, and we were caged, right? And we became enraged. We became more divisive as a as a country ever, ever than before. You see more arguments on social media than you've, you've ever see, seen before. And, and even the nicest people in the world, you see them have an edge that maybe they didn't have an, uh, uh, had before. And guess what? 2023, I'm seeing something happen to the consumer. And that is they're going from caged and enraged to this feeling of being uncaged, finally being free 
and being uncaged and being able to get out of their house. And they're looking to be engaged. So they're uncaged and willing to be engaged. And, and guess what? We can do that through events. We can do that. Like he said, an event is three people. Right. One, yep. one, one's a solo or unity, two's a couple, three's a crowd, right? Three's a crowd. That's a that's an event. So three to five people could be an event. And that leads to this thought that I hope everybody embraces. And that is, what if you knew every member of your sphere, of your sphere of influence was lonely? What would you do? If you knew every single member of your sphere of influence was lonely, what would you do? And you need to do that. And by doing that, you will get referrals. But you're going to, I mean, and everybody knows, I mean, you know, there's a secret behind this old referral podcast thing, right? This whole referral thing, right? I just want you all to know the referrals thing's a facade. It's a joke. It, I, I, it, it, it. You know what I do? I preach referrals because you want the money, but behind referrals is living this life of generosity, love, and appreciation. I'm just telling you, it's like the life of love, generosity, and appreciation is far greater than any referral I've ever gotten. I'm just telling you, right? The money is great, but, but the love, generosity, and appreciation is priceless, and, and that's. That's what you do when when you start to think this way, that maybe I could be the purveyor, I could be the, the person, the leader who brings people together. Does that mean you need to be entertaining? No, please, dear God, don't even go down that route, right? It's just get people together and let them engage. Let them engage. You don't need to do anything. I mean, so, I mean, that that's, that's so good, Curtis. I mean, you, you nailed it. You, you hit it, hit a home run with that one. Well, thank you. I, what you just gave was the number one thing you actually need to do the moment you stop listening to this podcast, or maybe you need to hit pause right now and you need to open up your SOI list or your VIP list, or you open up your cell phone, you click on your favorites. And how would you act if you knew every single person in your sphere is lonely? That's a beautiful, brilliant question. And what you do is you pick up the phone and you start with love. I'm here. How are you? I wanted to be talking to you on the phone, miss you. The next thing you'd probably do before you hung up that phone would be you'd add value. How can I help? I just watched a documentary. I just got a book. I just tried a game I, and, and you'd add some value, right? And you can you can translate this to your real estate business too, right? Because people are not only lonely, they're scared. Mm. They're uncertain, right? They're feeling free and they're kind of not sure. So you could guide them. That would be valuable. The last, the next thing, Michael already hit on it, is you could be specific. Mm. You could be specific about who you are, what you can do, what you want, how you can help. You could be specific about what they need, mm -hmm. what happened today. And they're going to tell you a story and they're going to feel better for it. And you're going to be more connected tomorrow. And then at the end, you can ask for something. And it doesn't have to be the referral. It could be the opportunity to get together, the invitation, whatever it may be, but you can do all that stuff. And, you know, shout out to a friend of mine, Michael, I was sitting at that mastermind yesterday. I mentioned with a buddy by the name of Josh Sigmund and uh, Josh was running through that list that I just spouted off. And that was why it was top of my mind because I'm out there surrounded by people who are preaching and, and teaching and doing this stuff for real too. And you're absolutely right. It comes from love. It comes from gratitude. You know, my feet hit the floor in the morning. I'm not wondering about my next referral or where I'm going to get to go or what I'm going to get to do. I'm thinking about being grateful for my family and my life and all the great things I have. And I'm wondering who I can help that day. You know, when you start like that, it's a pretty good day. I love it. I love it. Um, so, so much to unpack from all of this. I, I, I mean, it's one of those where that specificity, I mean, it, 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 you know, I'm going to give people. So let's say that you knew everybody was lonely yeah. and you got on the phone with them. And and the thing is, is if you just had the chat it, that you're a win, if you just said, hey, I was just thinking of you and I just thought I'd give you a call. I, yeah. Whenever I mean, whenever I have these popcorn thoughts, I've always found just call the person and just see what's up instead of just sitting there thinking about you and and you not knowing that I just thought about you. I thought yeah. I'd call, you know, and that's that's a win. But but then take it like what could you do? Yeah. There are two questions I would just they're the two questions that that I think we repeat over and over in Jinja, but it's never repeated enough is, is you know, what are their goals? What are their goals? Like, you know, what are your goals? And isn't it funny that when we talk about agents setting goals or or businesses setting goals, 
we always talk about the SMART goals, right? And the first word of SMART goals is specific, right? Specific, measurable, not miserable, measurable, Mm -hmm. specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound, right? And it's specific is the first one, right? So how, how do we know how to help another, right? We can assume but but that sucks. That's not good, right? We might assume they like a book we like, but but they probably already read it or maybe they don't like what we like. So what we need is we need a we need a target or we need a target for our affection arrow, right? How, how do we well, when we ask them like, you know, what are your goals this last couple of months of the year or you know, what are you, what are you looking to achieve or whatever it may be, goals at work, mm-hmm. goals at home, family goal. And when they tell us we can we can now like let's say they want to go to Egypt next year, right? They're like, well, it's not a family goal this year, but it it's next year. We're going to Egypt in September. We could send them a book on Egypt from Amazon for six bucks. Well, are they going to read that book on Egypt? Let's say we send them a book on Italy. Are they going to read that? Probably not. But it because it's a book on Egypt, they're going to read it because we looked for specificity in our homework assignment or in our value that we're given. The other one we've covered on this and, and, you know, a lot of, you know, this is my magic question. Like what's your biggest challenge right now? Just simply Mm -hmm. ask them like, what is your biggest? And they'll go personal or professional and you go, whichever one you want to talk about, it's all good. Right. And they'll, they'll tell you what their biggest challenge is right now. And, and then guess what we have? We have a tool to deliver value, right? We have a target for our affection arrow and and we're going to help them conquer their challenge, help them achieve their goal or help them realize a dream. And if we just do that all day long, every day, the reciprocity will overwhelm you with referrals. And that's, that's the magic. That's the magic formula of Genjin, right? That's the magic formula of Curtis. He delivers value every day to other people. And then they want to reciprocate the value and they do that through referrals, through helping him, right? Truth. I mean, you live it. You live it. You breathe it. You you love it. You are it. Um, so, all right, where are you seeing agents succeed right now, right? Yeah. Where, where you know, what are they doing differently, differently or better than everyone else? You have a great view. You've seen yeah. the, the growth mode two, the growth mode eight, and recently, right? Yeah. So, so what, do you, what are you seeing out there? So I'd say a high level, and then we're going to kind of practice chunking down. You use the word differently. I'm going to put a word in front of it. The number one thing that I see successful real estate entrepreneurs doing right now that separates them from everyone else is they are thinking differently. Mm. They're thinking differently. And in order to think differently, Michael, that means they're having to have different conversations because you don't usually change the way you think if you're not changing the conversation you're having or the input you're having. So they are reading more, listening more, watching more. They are in rooms with other people who are trying out new things. So they're thinking differently. Now, what areas are they thinking differently and what's their approach? Now, this is a weird one, but it goes back to exactly what we just said. I actually see more agents right now, Michael, joining forces. So I have a lot of team leaders whose team size is ex- exploding because, you know, if half the agents dropped out of the business at the beginning of the year and another half drop out before the end of the year, you know, that's a pretty scary scene when you look to your left and you look to your right in real estate and the last two people you saw are no longer in their chairs. So you're typically looking for, you know, Maslow's hierarchy. You're looking for safety and shelter. You're like, holy cow, I better get indoors. Is it raining? Right. There are some people feeling that. And so people are unifying, combining forces and partnering. So if you're struggling out there, one of my recommendations would be to go source all of the best real estate teams in your market and go interview every single one of them, find alignment and fit and partner up. So that's happening in a major week. in a major way. Um, the second thing that I'm seeing is, you know, again, as simple as it sounds, there's a return to basics right now, Mm -hmm. right? So what happened during the last three years, the pandemic is everyone who was committed to building a business got comfortable being online. So they got comfortable doing one to many. They got comfortable going live on YouTube. They got comfortable making videos. They got comfortable doing Zooms and they disconnected from some of the one-to-one personal face-to-face relationship building that they had been doing for years or decades. And even some top producers started to slow down their level of involvement, Michael, and they started leveraging their team and leveraging automation and leveraging AI. And all of a sudden, right now, it's game time. They have to be back in the seat, on the phone every day 
day. So again, I just keep talking about my friend because he's so on the top of my heart and mind today. I was hanging out with somebody yesterday and this guy's a multimillionaire. Mike, he runs a huge company. He's, he said, Curtis, I'm working 70 hour weeks again mm. because I'm not going to lose and I'm not going to let my clients lose. So I'm going to be on the phone. I'm going to be in the meetings and I'm going to do more than I've done in the last few years again. So the return to basics is the other thing that's working. You've got to be prospecting three hours a day again picking up the phone. You've got to get back into your video message game. You've got to be setting appointments again. And you just, you have to be, because again, there's so much confusion out there. You talked about um, caged and enraged and now uh, uncaged and willing to engage. They're dying for your phone call. Mm -hmm. Your past clients, your database, your sphere, your referrals that went pulled, they're dying to hear from you. They don't know what to do. They don't know what to think. And everyone's telling them to think that the sky is falling. Everyone's telling them to not buy because rates are terrible. If you really ran the financial analysis for a prospective buyer or seller right now, they're still likely to make money in the next five years in a real way. If they're renting, they should still be buying despite interest rates. But you've got to, again, work on yourself first to make sure you have that knowledge and that game ready to go. And then you've got to reach out and know that they're dying for you to call. So people are getting back to basics. Um, people are getting together. And then I think the last one is people are sort of re um, they're rethinking their relationship with technology. Hmm. So technology in the sales game and real estate space specifically, right? It's grown so much in the last decade or so that it started to become something people really relied on and not just leveraged or utilized, but really just went all in on. And what we've found with the emergence of AI and all the other new technologies is they are not a replacement for what you still have to do every single day in terms of building your relationships and, and being face to face with people. They're a tool. And so people are starting to treat the tools more like tools. And people are realizing that the only thing AI and technology probably won't be able to do in 10 or 20 years, Michael, is make a deeper connection mm -hmm. and communicate the way you and I are communicating and the way you can communicate with your clients and customers. So the double, triple, quadruple down on connection is what I'm also seeing top producers doing right now. Yeah, love that. And it, it's so interesting what you said about they're dying to hear from you is, is yep. um, I, I, we, I put one of my coaching clients on the spot in a, in a group call um, and, and said, no, I want you to call right now. I mean, you know, you had some hesitation and we were talking about different things. And, and so, no, I want, I want you to put it on speakerphone and I want you to, I want you to call that guy right now. Right. I mean, and I had no, I, I just had a good feeling about it. Right. I, my instincts were, you know what, this guy needs to call this guy. Love so, that. so he called and the other guy was so happy to hear from him that it's like, oh my God, just what is up? Yes. I, I just thinking about you the other day. Yes. And they had this great conversation. It was a referral exchange? No. But you know, he hung up after like two minutes, right? And well, and not yet. He has 20 it. minutes to go before he gets the referral. So there you go. Yeah, yeah. And and what was interesting is is just he was I like, all right, so how'd that go? He goes, oh, it went great. I didn't get a referral or anything. I'm like, okay, but but here's the thing. What'd you learn? He was like, man, I was so surprised, like how happy he was to hear from me. Yeah. And and it's like, exactly, exactly. People are, they're, they're so glad to hear from you. Yeah. So just pick up the phone and make the call, you know, text them, whatever, whatever it needs to be. Um, so collaborate, partner, you know, back to the basics, you know, the communication pyramid, and and like real rethink your your relationship with tech. Tech is a tool. Tech is is not a relationship builder, right? right. It, it will help you build relationships, but but it's not going to be be the builder. You you need to be the builder, or you need to teach your your team how to be those those builders of relationships. So you got it. that's awesome. All right, tell us about EXPCon 2023, yeah. the biggest and baddest ever, right? And like what's what's uh, what's going on with this thing? Yeah. So first I'm going to, I'm going to frame it for you, the listener, right? If you are hearing about this and you go to the website and you wonder what it is, whether you're an EXP realty agent or not, or a real estate entrepreneur or not in general, right? Michael talked about conferences, conferences and events right now being a place where you can go turn up your meters, whatever your meter is, growth meter, lead meter, referral leader meter, right? So it's a place right now where you can go. So first off, if you're looking for a place to go, to go get something, this is worth considering. The second thing you need to be thinking about is what I talked about earlier was skilling up, right? Right now, if you're not sure what skills you should be acquiring, you don't actually need to be talking to me and Michael. 
You need to be talking to the real estate agent who's selling 150 million in their market this year that only sold 90 million last year because holy cow, they're doing something different, right? So you need to not only get to an event or get to a room, you need to get to the room where the person doing exactly what you want to do is talking and telling you what they're doing. So EXP Con Michael is EXP Realty's annual major event. It's in Las Vegas. As you mentioned, it runs October the 2nd through the 5th. And it's four days of really training, um, networking, inspiration, motivation. And probably the, the biggest opportunity there is building your referral network. Because mm-hmm. agents from all across the U.S. and globe are flying in. And so there's there's this one event. It's this little thing. You wouldn't even notice it on the agenda. But if you go, you need to go to the super fantabulous meet and greet. So what mm-hmm. it is, is agents from across the country handing out business cards. You walk out of there with 250 new relationships, new prospective referral partners. And I think the number is something like, oh, don't quote me. I'm going to say tens of thousands of real estate referrals get re- exchanged inside eXp's referral network every single year. And eXp Con is one of the live versions of that. But you're going to come get training. You're going to come get networking. The way I'm telling it to agents, right? You think about something you need to get smarter in this year. You need to get smarter at math. I know that mm-hmm. scares a lot of real estate entrepreneurs right now, <laughs> Michael, but you need to get, and all you need to do is like three or four basic math problems. It's all you need to know. Can you explain ROI? Can you explain tax benefits of buying a home? Can you explain buying versus renting? And can you explain appreciation? Like if you can explain those four things, you're smart enough at math. But the math part of coming to a big event like EXPCon is I'm going to invest some money. Let's call it $2,000 for a person to buy a ticket, fly out there and get a hotel room and stay in Vegas for a few nights. $2,000. So what you have to do if your average sales price is $300,000 is you got to sell one more home this year because of going out there. So when you go out there, you're singularly focused. Not only do I want to get energized, not only do I want to network, not only do I want to meet all these great people, I want something that's going to help me sell another home this year that I wouldn't have hold, wouldn't have sold if I hadn't been out there. So to me, at a minimum, you come three to five X your return and it was absolutely worth it. And then you're going to get all the other juice that Michael talked about earlier. Yeah, that's awesome. And they need to go to expcon.exprealty.com to make that happen. And uh, make sure you get the the premier and the premium package because that will give you the entire VIP experience. I am speaking on that VIP experience at four o'clock Vegas time, which is like midnight Eastern, I think. (laughs) Um, And uh, I'll have the opportunity to speak. And by the way, if you hear about it here on referrals podcast and you go to the event, make sure you come up to me, you know, right after I speak, let's do a little fist bump and I'd love to meet you um, and come on up. All right. And then that kind of leads to like, I got this great opportunity and uh, you know, Curtis connected with me. He, he, He emailed me and said, Hey, listen, we need to, we need to chat about EXP con. And he said, I was referred to you. And, you know, of course, that's music to my ears. So I, I like, I really want to pare that down. Like, yeah. how did you get that second referral of of this? And kind of tell me how that went down. Yeah. So I mentioned in my role, I'm very fortunate to lead a team, Michael, that we refer to at EXP as EXP University. And so we have a, a university staff. It's a small staff, less than 10 of us that are supporting these, you know, almost 90,000 agents across the globe with training and development and experiences. And if you've been in real estate and you've been fortunate enough to have a friend or mentor who's read Michael's book, you're almost always going to get referred to that book at some point in your career early, later. And so we're we're planning EXP Con. I'm on the planning committee and we're getting speakers selected and all this great stuff. And privately, one of the EXP University members, leaders, shout out to Candace Garcia. She's the senior director of EXP University. Candace Garcia has been a real estate agent herself for, I think, over a decade. And she messages me privately and said, did you know that Michael Mayer is connected to EXP Realty? I said, no, I didn't know. Did you know he's here? He's in our community? I said, get out of here. Really? So she said, would you please see if he would come speak at EXPCon. Would you please see if you can reach him? So she referred me to you. I didn't know you were connected to our community. And, you know, we've never met, we've never spoken. And she just, she said, please. And she said, he would be amazing. Um, We now know how to find him, go find him. And so that's what I did. So Candace asked, you were gracious enough to be interested in getting involved. 
Um, you are so referable that the moment you and I spoke, we spoke for about 30 minutes and I knew for sure you would add massive value and rock the stage and bring so much good stuff to this event. So I referred you to the C-level executive team and it was an instant yes. And you'll be on stage in Vegas now. So thank you. Thanks to Candice and uh, thanks to the EXP leadership team who were also big fans. I love it. And uh, shout out to Candace Garcia as well. That's that's fantastic. And uh, you know, what's interesting, I I don't I don't know her. I don't know her all that well. So, right. so, you know, we're referred from somebody. And I, I, by the way, I sure in the heck am going to connect with her right after this, along with Kyle, right? Kyle Handy. Yeah. I mean, I got to give him a, a shout out and give him um, thanks and appreciation because he was one that first put that book in your hands too. And and I was going to ask you like what did Candace say when when she referred me, um, and you you've kind of already kind of gone into that with with how that conversation went, and I I want that to be a lesson for people too, is when you get referred, ask people who referred. I mean that's just good practice anyway. Sometimes right. you'll know the answer, but don't be afraid to ask them to confirm that. Like who was it that referred, and then they'll say whoever it was. One of the best questions you can ask next is, what did they say about me? The reason for that is, one, it reconfirms the, the, the referral psychologically. So it, it, it just plants it more in their head what they said. It's almost like they're hearing it again, mm -hmm. even though they're saying it. And the other thing that it does is it helps you clarify how people are referring you. I've had people refer me as the best first-time home buyer agent. Well, right. we work with sellers too. We work with buyers of treasure homes too. We've had people say, if you're a first time home seller, it's the first time you've ever sold a home. You got to, you got, and we've had people refer said, well, if you're in Southampton, you should use Michael Mayer. Right. And it's like, all right, we, we need to reeducate the person that's been referred that, Hey, listen, we do work Southampton. You're in Southampton. We're going to help you. Then we need to go to the referral source and just go, oh, my gosh, thanks for referring us, that person in Southampton. I also wanted to let you know, here are our service areas, and we do work these service areas. So anybody in that area, we'd love a referral from, right? And, and so guess what? I get to have another referral conversation with somebody who just referred me, and I'm always looking for something to expand that referral brand in the mind of the referral source from that initial consult consultation or that initial conversation. So yeah. make sure we follow up those referrals, follow it up diligently, but also follow up. What did they say? Right. What have you heard about me? And, and let them tell you, let them talk through it. And a lot of times by the end of that, I mean, I've had sellers where I'm setting with them and say, what did you hear by the end of the, them talking about me? I was like, I don't need to do my listing presentation. It was like, they're sold. <laughs> and you know what you do when people are sold? You shut up and Absolutely. you have them sign. And then you you go through the education process, right? So um, just another neat little follow-up question there for, for those of you that are hanging out with us all the way to the 50th plus minute here. So, all right. So final words of wisdom on, on somebody that wants to be more referable, somebody that that's looking to be successful in, in today's market. What, what kind of advice would you, would you give to, to someone right now? Yeah. Hmm. It's a great one. So super simple, right? Again, you can shout it from stage, but you got to explain a little bit about what it means and give a little context. So I'd say the number one thing I'd recommend right now is that you be you be mm. you. So that, that's literally a, a joke I have with a lot of my friends. Like they'll ask me and, and people I mentor, they'll ask me, what should I do in this situation? I just write hashtag be you. Mm -hmm. And they don't love it because that's not very helpful, clear or specific advice. So let me unpack and kind of tell you what it means. You know, if you don't have an understanding of what your value is, what you stand for, what you do well, what your skills are, why people would trust you or refer you, how they're talking about you. If you don't know any of that stuff, you need to get really clear on it right away because that's the only way you're actually going to generate and become um, referable and generate massive referrals. If you do know that stuff and you're still not getting the referrals you want, that's an indicator that you may not actually be showing up how people see you. You may not be showing up wearing the identity that you want to wear, right? And so then you have some bigger, deeper work to do, but you've got to track down what it means to be you because people like you before they trust you, before they refer you, right? So you've just got to be yourself 
and be comfortable being yourself. And that's a journey of its of itself, Michael. Another conversation for another time, as you said, but hashtag be you. That's the number one thing you can do to increase your referability. I love it. You be you. Uh, I love it. And uh, you know what? We are going to have to have you on at another time. Are you open to that? Can we have you on at another time? I'm glad to come back. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, Curtis Dixon, the Senior Vice President of Agent Development with EXP Realty. I want to just say from all of us, Curtis, thank you so much for the value you delivered today. It was it was awesome. Thank you, Referrals Podcast family. This was a blast. See you in Vegas. Ladies and gentlemen, speaking of Vegas, go check out expcon.exprealty.com. Sign up for the premier or premium pass, and that gets you the VIP experience. Uh, You'll get the opportunity to see me speak along with tons of other great speakers and a lot of value delivered. Also, I can't go without you know, under referral mastery system, we've got self mastery, first love yourself, that whole one to none, really master the one to none, which is master your love of yourself and taking care of yourself. And then we have relationship mastery, which is that one to one, you know, unpack that one on one meeting, the zooms. And then we have event mastery, which is the one to many strategies underneath the referral mastery system. And man, we talked about how you can leverage that avenue to get more referrals, build relationships. And what if you knew everyone in your sphere was lonely? Well, you would invite them to an event or a party or a get together. I would hope that would be your solution. And guess what? I'll hold your hand for seven weeks and show you how to do it. Small event, bigger event, whatever you want to do. First event, hundredth event. I'll show you what to do. Eventmastery.com. Go check it out. Ladies and gentlemen, I just appreciate you so much for tuning in to Referrals Podcast each and every week. We love it. We appreciate you. We'll see you in the generosity generation at joingengen.com. And we will see you next time on Referrals Podcast. We'll see you next time, everybody. 